Greetings. Longtime viewers and readers know that I often speak about what percentage of the economy can now be classified as high tech and how the greater proliferation of high tech throughout the economy is what causes not only exponential economic progress, but exponential technological deflation and eventually leads to a technological singularity. So some background material to look at is chapter two of my Atom publication, which is over here and will be in the description box below. If you like audiobooks, then you can hear my narration of this chapter in this video up here. In fact, I've done the first 10 chapters of the publication as an audiobook slash video book. Video book because I still look at the graphs in the chapter. So to begin the topic of this video, we look at these charts over here, which are historical trends of exponential economic progress. And this one as well. And you can read some of the material over here about how the percentage of the economy that is becoming high tech is in fact rising. And I contend that it is now at about 3% of the total world economy as measured by GDP. Now, if we take asset values, then it could be even a little bit more than 3% at the moment. But since GDP is the universal metric, however imperfect for the time being, we can take 3% of GDP. So how do I come up with that calculation and what is the trend of that number changing? So for that, we go to some slides. What is the percentage of world economy that is high tech? Here's what I think it has been historically, and I'll tell you how I calculate this. In 2000, it was a half a percent. This is when it finally became large enough to even measure at all. Before 2000, it was too small a percent of the world economy to matter. By 2008, that had doubled to 1%. Still a very small percentage, but it had doubled. 2016, 2%, doubling again. And now here in 2022, I say that it is 3% or even a tiny fraction higher than 3% at this point. So this is rising. And at 3%, it is starting to distort more and more economic statistics, which is evident from the fact that quantitative easing seems to be rising exponentially. And whenever they try to undo it, they are forced to do much more than they ever did before in very short order. And the economics establishment cannot figure this out because they don't understand the difference between high tech versus low tech. So in the near future, what will these percentages be? I say under my calculations that it could be 4% by 2024. So a couple of years from now, we will be up to 4% and then things start to get really crazy. What if it's 8% by 2032? That is only a decade from now, 8% by 2032, because the share of the economy that is high tech doubles within a certain period of time. Now, one other video in which I have described this convergence of high tech throughout the entire economy is this video up here, which is where I speak about how I estimate a time frame for a technological singularity. And I'm gonna do an update video about that as well. But if you watch that video, one of the more successful videos on this channel, you'll see how I estimate the continued progression of more and more of the economy becoming high tech and how when 50% of the economy is high tech, so a continuation of this progression that you see right here, then we have a technological singularity. And I say 50% by 2062, which you can see in that video that I just pointed to. Now, what counts as high tech? In summary, anything that is improving rapidly and exponentially year over year at at least a rate of 10% a year qualifies as high tech. So if a product is 10% better for the same price as the earlier version a year prior, or is 10% cheaper for the same thing, that qualifies as high tech. All of you are familiar with Moore's law. Moore's law was effectively a doubling of semiconductor performance per unit price every 18 months or so in some cases described as two years, but the productization in the semiconductor industry was 18 months for a pretty long time before recently slowing down. So a doubling every 18 months is about 36% a year compound annual growth rate. Other technologies have actually improved at a slightly faster rate than that, many at a somewhat slower rate than that. But if it's more than 10% a year, it qualifies as high tech because that is exponential technological improvement that compounds year over year and leads to very rapid change, much more so than something that's low tech that might only be improving at one or 2% a year, which is far below that 10% threshold. So that is the definition of high tech versus low tech. And there's obviously gradients within that, which we'll go to next and more and more of the economy is becoming high tech. Now, how do I come to these numbers over here? What portion of the economy comprises of product and services that meet that high tech threshold? 
So I go to the next slide. So here's a selection of high-tech and borderline high-tech and some non-high-tech products at the bottom, from the highest to the lowest. I categorize them as high technological purity, which I'll discuss, medium and low. High means the ones that are the most rapidly advancing and that generate the most deflation, as you can see over here. Software is completely dematerialized. Dematerialization is inherent to being high tech because that means you don't have to worry about inventory and materials and shipping, and it can diffuse to the greatest number of people the fastest. So advanced productivity enhancing software on a software as a service type of delivery model is pretty much the highest tech type of thing. When low tech is converted to high tech, the high tech entry can be anywhere on this list. Just because low tech got converted to high tech, such as an incandescent bulb going to an LED bulb or taxis being replaced by ride sharing services such as Uber and Lyft, doesn't mean it starts at the bottom. That could come in the middle as well based on the extent of the disruption that has occurred. And that is a function of how overdue the disruption was, which I talk about in other videos. For example, if you want to see a discussion of that as it relates to taxi medallions and ride sharing services like Uber, watch this video up here. But the highest tech type of product that exists in the world today at any substantial scale is advanced productivity enhancing software. Commoditized software, biotech IP, semiconductors, and solid state storage are also very high. These have high technological purity. Medium technological purity are ones that have more hardware components and certain low-tech elements that have to be wrapped around the high-tech core. A server, a Raspberry Pi unit, a finished product of a PC, tablet, smartphone, etc., or an individual LED. And then low-tech products still have some exponentiality, but as we get to the bottom of this list, it is no longer high-tech at all, such as a modern internal combustion engine car, a modern electrical appliance, or even a super material like carbon fiber. It's not really high-tech yet. It's higher tech than its predecessor, but it's not a 10% a year improving thing, so we don't talk about that. Even a photovoltaic cell, while higher tech than other sources of electrical generation, it's not a 10% a year improving type of thing. So in this zone, we are on the border between high tech and low tech or outright low tech still, but some of these keep progressing up. As you can see in this bullet over here, the broader technological mega trend is for more product categories to rise higher and higher on this list. For example, batteries. Batteries were improving at a very slow rate, but the battery revolution and the EV revolution have made batteries improve at a faster rate than that, as I talk about often in my monthly EV sales update videos. Certain types of batteries are in fact improving at 10% a year in terms of their efficiency for unit cost. So when I calculate the percentage of the economy that's high tech, I take a weighted average of how high a product category is in the technological purity score, I have some proprietary calculations I'm not going to disclose in this video about the exact multiplier I use for each of these. And then I look at what is the revenue of each industry among the items on this list worldwide. How many dollars per year of advanced productivity enhancing software are sold each year? How many semiconductors are sold each year? These are widely published numbers that are easy to look up. How many finished products in terms of PCs, tablets, and smartphones are sold each year? How many individual LED bulbs are sold each year? What is the total revenue of that? How many batteries of every type are sold each year? What is the total worldwide revenue from that? And then when you combine those two variables, the technological purity and the dollar revenue, and get a grand total and see what percentage of total GDP that represents, that leads to the estimation. And so if I go back to this upper slide, that's how we got to 2000 being 0.5%, 2008 being 1%, 2016 being 2%, and today we're at 3% plus. Now remember, it took centuries upon centuries of human civilization to even get to 3%. There was nothing high tech really until the start of the 21st century under this 10% a year definition. In the 19th century, 1% a year was considered high tech. Some people who generally agree with my Atom thesis, they still make the mistake of saying there was a tremendous amount of technological progress between 1870 and 1900 that is like today. No, it wasn't. It was above trend for the time, but that was the proliferation of a lot of 1% a year technologies not 10% of your technology. There were no 10% of your technologies that far back because that was 150 years ago. 10% of your compounded for 150 years would be an extremely huge number. So it was higher tech than the period that was before it 
and a cluster of things like the telephone that were 1% a year improving type of technologies. But to compare the 1870 to 1900 period to today in terms of the scale of technological disruption is not accurate. Now we're at 3%. 3% is a lot. A lot of amazing things are going to happen. And remember, we have gotten accustomed to very rapid progress. When any tech startup begins, they are expected by the venture capitalist investors who invest in these tech startups to reach a huge valuation, billions of dollars within three to five years. That has to be the crux of their pitch because that is what the other companies those venture capitalists are funding are looking for and some of whom achieve that as well. And so getting from zero to 3% took all of human civilization and even the time before that, if you look at the accelerating rate of change even before humans, but now big things are gonna happen. The speed of change, the scale of technological disruption and the speed of economic progress, however chaotic it's going to be, is just going to be much faster. And pretty soon we're going to be immersed in numbers like this, 4% by 2024, 8% by 2032, and of course, 50% by 2062, give or take, which is then a technological singularity. So this is some very profound food for thought, but I'm often asked about why I think 3% of the economy is now high tech. How do I calculate that? And how much deflation does that generate? And does that match up with the trend of quantitative easing that we see? The longtime viewers of this channel know I do a monthly video for. This is how this number ties into that more tactical, more actionable number of how much money printing there has to be just to keep up with technological progress and therefore technological deflation. So a lot of concepts over here. But to answer the question of how I come to 3% and how that becomes the starting point of even my technological singularity calculations, I hope this video gave you some information about that. Now, if you like this type of content and you found this subject to be very, very interesting given how little content there is on the internet about this subject, even though it truly affects everything and everyone in the world, then I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching.